unbiased, unscripted, unsupervised, unconfirmed, and probably a little unhinged. You're watching The Hump. Thanks for joining us this week. Again, we have the lovely Julius. You're looking at me, you're making me nervous. <laughs> we have Sophie Hello. and Jace. Hey, hey, and what's happening on Protect News this week? What happens when your trusted IT guy goes nuts at the controls and switches everything off? Rental Point, the largest inventory management system in the world, found out the hard way recently. The story is in this week's ProTech News. One of Australia's greatest music promoters, Michael Chugg, will donate five cents a ticket to the Australian Road Crew Association. The deal boosts the money in the Benevolent Fund, which helps crew with medical and emergency expenses. Finally, we lift the lid on yet another liquidation. This time, an events company in Sydney tanks owing over 800 grand. All this and more in our weekly ProTech News. It's absolutely free. Subscribe at juliusmedia.com. Okay, team. Uh, now, not two weeks ago, we were talking about touch interfaces and, mm. and ways to control things. I particularly loved your idea about how to control lighting by gesture. Dreaming mm. into the future. Yes, indeed. And uh, what do you know? Behringer, of all people, who have released a synthesizer of all things, oh. have come along and dropped <coughs> this on us. It's a virtual reality interface mm. for actually controlling the synth. Uh, let's have a look. My name is Pete Sadler. I'm head of software at Midas. We're here at Synthfest in Sheffield showing our DeepMind 12. We're also showing a world exclusive augmented reality interface to our DeepMind 12 as well. And with that, you can see inside the DeepMind, you can look at the mob matrix, you can see the envelopes, and you can do lots of really interesting things. People have been playing it today, so let's look at some of the reactions. I thought the, the immersiveness of it was, was fascinating, even just for the, the few minutes that I was using it there. Um, I thought you felt as though you were somehow in the, the, the synthesizer, as it were. And uh, yeah, I thought it was absolutely fascinating. The, uh, the bits that I particularly liked were, was being able to see, I loved seeing the, on the envelopes, and I loved it. And then I started to sort of see how, that was the way I could really see how the technology could really work. Because, you know, and, and adjusting the envelopes there and seeing that heads up display reacting to it but it was really nice seeing all three envelopes at the same time and then you could just toggle between them i also thought it was interesting uh, seeing the green dots on the keys for um you know like learning keys or learning songs i thought that was pretty cool too to integrate that technology into real life situation you know it, i think it's going to be quite interesting but i certainly think with a synthesizer that's as complex and as deep as the deep mind being able to visualize it. I like the mod matrix as well. In fact, the mod matrix was really interesting because I've been really intrigued about the mod matrix and seeing it is actually, whoa! Actually seeing what, 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 you know, all the sources and all the destinations, I thought that was really cool as well. And, you know, that was this big, you know, how, how are you gonna do that on a physical synth? So yeah, so that side of things is really cool. I think as well, it's a brilliant, uh, it's a brilliant way of exploring that synthesizer because it's a deep synth. It's a lovely synth. I'm really quite taken with it. All right. I mean, apart from the novelty value and it's fun to play with the bits with your hands. Amazing. I, the first thing I can think of is like beyond synthesizers, mixing desks, sliding desks, anything. Because at the moment, people are making these very expensive big things with big touch screens that cost a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's reliable and we can work it, then you could actually have as much control in front of you. Maybe a combo as much of the real two. Estate. Maybe, um, yeah. Because I'm, I'm touch screens. Hardware. I don't, I don't want to do this to mm. turn up a pot, no. a rotary pot, but I don't mind doing that to put a fader up. Yeah, yeah. I'd want a combination yeah. of, of hardware for the really important stuff like mm. faders and EQ, I'm just mm. talking about sound desks, and then maybe that virtual reality thing to, I don't know, organise my my scenes and you know drag and drop other things or more setup kind yeah. of stuff. The synth yeah. thing uh, could lend to some good theatrics though, where you'll get 
some actually talented DJ producers. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Who are yes, uh, actual performers. Yeah, electronic performing musicians more. have been doing this. A few people have invented these glove things you can wear that can control computers. I've seen a number of performers yeah. do stuff with custom built electronics on their arms yeah. where they gesture around, and it's always pretty theatrical. But you only need glasses on this one. Yeah, That's I mean, great. like Daft Punk kind of do that. You know, where they wear the helmets yeah. and they're doing yeah. all this kind of stuff. You can see them doing that. But I just see the applications for this going that they could way do beyond synthesizers. Mm. Yeah. And um, yeah, really popping up in all sorts of stuff. And Midas were apparently in on this. So I wonder what the link there is. Well, it's all part of that music. Well, they're, they're, just called, they're just called music now, aren't they? Probably they're expect group, what we were talking about, which is a more virtual form of mixing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just you get more control for less money. Yeah. I mean, there's the software development and you've got to own a headset and I've got no idea what those things cost. But mm. And then you've got to take the drugs. Well, yeah. That's <laughs> I, I, for one, am very excited to see where this will go. Mm. Mm. I think it's great. Anything's possible. Sky's mm. the limit. It's pretty cool. Mm. All right, we'll be back after this. QSC's new TouchMix 30 Pro Digital Mixer has 32 input channels, 24 mic lines, 6 lines stereo USB, via 8 subgroups, 8 mute groups or 8 DCA groups, and 16 outputs. Central to everything is a large 10-inch multi-touch touchscreen. 120 live instrument, microphone and other audio source presets are included, with 6-band fully parametric EQ, variable high-pass and low-pass filters, limiters and more available on the channels. All outputs feature one third octave graphic, six band parametric EQ, limiters, delays, and 12 band notch filters. 14 mono mixers can be paired as stereos, and two pairs of auxes can drive wired IEMs directly. The TouchMix 30 Pro includes six stereo effects processors with pitch correction, anti feedback, and room tuning wizards, two RTAs, a touch and route patch matrix, 32 channel direct to hard drive record playback, 32 channel DAW Apple interface, and MP3 playback from USB. Well, welcome back. Now, as excited as we all are about you know, virtual reality control over our kitchens or garages or whatever we're going to do, uh, in, in show business, uh, this, this kind of interface that we're looking at, if it ends up in all of our consoles, um, we're adding another point of failure. So you've got a point of failure between your hands and the detection, the glasses and the software in your device, and then, I don't know, the actual wireless link or whatever. So, okay, they've, they've been using those remote follow spots for a while now. The yeah, but they're, they're wired. They're wired. Have there been any disconnection or, like, oh, you're not there with your hands on the follow spot. That's a fantastic so, idea. Yeah, it's a great idea, but I mean, is there any, are we adding more fault? No, we're, we're in improving safety and we're cutting mm. costs because it's easier, faster, less rigging. Mm. Love it. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, you, you're right. The f Bug, the bug potential here mm. is uh, mm. exponential. I feel yeah. like it's first generation. Like we're going to mm. iron out a lot of these bugs over time. Yeah. Personally, I like it when there's always a manual option. You know, if things yeah. are faulty, you can just go switch and then go straight back to yeah. manual in case. Yeah, hit the panic mm. button. Yeah. <laughs> you need the button for the panic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of gear, let's have a look in Gearbox. So here we are once again in the CX Garage of Truth with the SGM G1 Beam and our Rainstorm. Doesn't really seem to be too bothered by the water, which is pretty much what I'd expect. I think uh, the biggest problem you're going to have with the G1 Beam is stopping people from taking it off your site without asking permission. There you go. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. And of course, Julius loves it. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. Bye.